Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table we're going to be talking about the Phantom 3 Standard, um, <laughs> which was announced uh, last week while I was away enjoying some fabulous Welsh weather, as those of you who are subscribers may have seen. Um, so that's what we're going to discuss today. Now there's two aspects to it. There's the controversy around it, and it's some of the things that have been, been announced by it, and there's just the kind of the specs of what it is. I'm going to concentrate on the latter in this video and just talk about some of the comparison between some of the features and um, that you can find on that versus the advanced and the pro. Uh, I'm going to do another video about the controversy and, and what some people have a problem with in the way that DJI's current business model seems to be going. But before we talk about any of that, it's the kitchen table and uh, we always have a beverage when we're talking drones on the kitchen table. And today uh, I'm off the coffee because I'm having a very, very nice chilled time this afternoon. And um, we've got this very nice secret seller, Shiraz Grenache, uh, South African from 2014. And I'm enjoying that. So uh, <clears throat> cheers, everyone. Mm. Very nice, too. Let's put that out of the way. So, the Phantom 3 standard has been announced. Um, I've had lots of questions about this. Um, there does seem to be some, some confusion about the difference between the standard and then moving up to the advanced and pro. And also some people seem to have missed a couple of key things that I think you need to be aware of if you want to buy a standard. So the first thing that's caused um, some eyebrow raising is the camera. The camera in the standard is 2.7K. So it's it's UHD, ultra high definition, but it's 2.7K as opposed to 4K, which you get in the Pro, of course. Um, now, the reason why that's raised eyebrows is because of the camera in the advanced is 1080p, so full HD. Um, however, there are a couple of differences. Um, now the camera in the um, standard has a no-name sensor. The camera in the Advanced and the Pro has a Sony Exmor, a branded sensor from a very well-respected manufacturer in, in imaging. So it would be very interesting to see if, the, if there's a, an appreciable difference. Now the bit rates are the same, maximum of 40 megabits um, a bit rate on the Pro, sorry, on the Advanced and the Standard. The Pro, however, which obviously has the 4K camera, uh, will take it up to 60. So that's a key difference. But yeah, one thing I, I spotted was that the, this is the, the, the Standard does not use the, the branded Sony Exmor sensor. Whether that's going to make a difference or not, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it'll do 2.7K, which the currently the advanced won't. Now there is rumour that that can be unlocked with um, firmware. Uh, it would be, in my opinion, really bad if DJI didn't allow that to happen on the advanced, providing it is capable of doing it. If it isn't, ouch. Um, so yeah, no name sensor in the, in the which is going to help to bring the cost down because that's the other key thing. Of course, this is being marketed by DJI as the beginner's drone. P1 out of here, FC40 gone, Phantom 2 history as far as DJI is concerned. This is now your new beginner drone, your entry level. One of the other things that um, uh, some people haven't picked up on is that the, the GPS receiver in the P3 Advanced and Pro has GLONASS. That's the European, the Russian um, sort of version of GPS as well as using the standard GPS, which means that you get much better uh, satellite pickup. I've never seen less than 16 satellites received, which means that when this is in you know moderate to calm wind conditions, the the advanced and the pro just hang in the air like there's no no tomorrow i mean it's 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 phenomenally accurate because it has so much more information to gauge whether or not it's moving off off track the uh, the standard does not have glonass 
So if you're familiar with the Phantom 2 Vision Plus and the way that that kind of hangs around, um, it'll be the same. So not as tight and accurate. Um, the other thing is that it, it's, it doesn't have light bridge. Um, I've had some people sort of comment that how can they build in light bridge at that cost. They haven't. It's not light bridge at all. It goes back to a version of the Wi-Fi system that the Vision Plus had. So you have your app. The app makes a, a local connection with a range extender, which in this one is actually hidden away inside the transmitter. And then the range extender creates a, um, a sort of slightly boosted connection with the aircraft. Now, because it's into the transmitter, it's not as directional, uh, I don't think, as the as the old version was, which means that you have a problem with range. Now, it still uses 5.8 gigahertz for control because it's using Wi-Fi at 2.4 for uh, its downlink and video. Uh, the the Pro and the Advanced using Lightbridge don't have to worry about that. They send everything both ways over a 2.4 signal, so you know the the control range is as uh, doesn't have this kind of this limit because there's less penetration on 5.8. But then this is another big but. Um, the absolute range of controlling your standard has been quoted by DJI as half a mile, just over half a mile, 0 0.6 miles or one kilometer um, as a maximum. That's when it's expected to to drop out. Now. What's interesting is when I delve down into the specs, that is in FCC mode. In Europe, that maximum is only 500 meters. So, bear that in mind if you're not in the States. Um, uh, now, again, they're touting it as a beginner aircraft, and so for most beginners, you really don't want to be flying it further than you can actually see it. That's bad idea, but I know that many, many people do. A lot of people think, well, what's the point of having a flying camera with a video downlink if I can't send it away where I couldn't see normally? You know my opinions on that sort of thing. But it's something to, to, to beware of if you're going to be flying in Europe, you're going to get half the spec maximum range that it headlines on the website. Again, something to note. The other interesting thing is that they're both operating a 720p downlink. Now Lightbridge does it in a in a quite clever way and you know it, it's it's full HD full screen and looks looks very nice. Um, over Wi-Fi, I know they're gonna be sh all sharing this new Go app, which we'll talk about in a second. Over Wi-Fi, I'm not sure um, how how good that's gonna be. We'll have to wait until the first people get them and use them with smartphones and we'll see how that, that goes. But again, they're using the, the clamp on the transmitter, which is the kind of a, a version of the standard Phantom 2 transmitter. So it's not quite as, as chunky and not as many interesting buttons as you get on the, on the P3 Advanced than the Pro. Um, but it will be interesting to see when people start using smartphones um, and what that's like. Uh, and those were the key kind of differences. Um, obviously the price point is lower and when you start to dig in you see why. So they're reusing some of their Wi-Fi technology, um, albeit with a built-in, built into to a new sort of converted transmitter. Now, uh, people did have problems with the range extenders in their Phantom 2s sometimes and, and of course you could then, if it failed, you could buy a new one and just bind it and there it was. If, if it's built into the transmitter and it's the same kind of process and you're going to get a certain failure rate, that becomes more expensive to replace. But you know, no name, no name sensor in the camera, um, no updated GPS chip, um, no light bridge. You're starting to see now how they squeeze the price point down. So there we go, that's the sort of the highlights that I spotted in terms of the differences. Um, I think a lot of people who've got a Phantom 2, I'm sorry, a Phantom 3 Advanced might be a bit upset. 
but we shall see. Now the only other thing is it's promised as coming soon, point of interest mode, the other IOC modes and all those things. I'm going to assume that that is going to be rolled out across all the P3s because if it isn't then there'll be an absolute riot. So it looks like that's going to be done with the firmware update and once they've rolled out the app, um, but that's coming soon. Thank you very much as ever for all your support and uh, if, you'd, uh, if you'd like to help support the channel and keep these sort of things coming then have a look in the description, there's some links down there as to how you can help and um, uh, thanks to everyone who's ordered their official supporter mug they should all be um, on the, winging their way to you you should receive them by now um, uh, they're going to be being sent out every week going on so uh, yeah, many thanks indeed uh, until next time we'll see you again on the kitchen table until then cheers